Okay, well, um, good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for joining. Uh, good morning for those that aren't joining from the UK or whatever time it is from where you're from. Uh, I am uh, Joe from Sobe Dynavox, and uh, I'm joined with uh, John, who is another account manager from Sobe Dynavox. And uh, we've got an exciting one for you today, so uh, this should be good. Um, we um, we welcome any questions as we go. Uh, we're both going to be presenting parts, so we're going to jump back and forth, but we're going to try for one of us to keep an eye on the chat as we uh, as we run through this. So um, for anyone who's not used Zoom before, you'll have this toolbar in front of you, uh, and you've got the chat icon here in the middle. So do feel free to, to type a question in, um, and we'll um, periodically stop and check the chat uh, and try and answer any questions as best we can. We've Assuming we keep the schedule, which I can't promise knowing me and John, but we'll do our best. Um, we've tried to leave some time at the end for questions as well. Um, so, yeah, please do feel free to, uh, to let us know uh, any feedback or, or questions um, as we go. So, as I said, I, I'm Joe Narayan Singh. I'm based in the northwest of England. I'm one of the account managers for Talk Dynavox, and I'm joined with John, who's one of our senior account managers. Um, and today we are excited to show you guys um, in detail, really, for the first time, the uh, new accessible apps that are in Communicator 5. Before we're going to jump into the apps, I'm just going to give you a bit of background information on Communicator 5 for anyone who is unfamiliar with it. For those who've been to our um, previous webinars on Communicator 5, bear with us because um, you may have seen some of this stuff before, but we think it's important because some of the features um, that we've discussed in some of the previous webinars are relevant to uh, what we're going to be looking at today with the um, accessible apps. So without further ado, we'll jump in. And uh, just a quick bit of background on Communicator 5 for those who aren't familiar. Um, historically, Communicator 5 had, and it still does have tools to accommodate for communicators um, for different levels, whether someone's an emerging communicator, whether they're using symbols to communicate, or whether they're a text-based user. And although we still have those tools in there, um, newer products have come out uh, that focus on other areas from within Toby Dynavox. So for emerging communicators now, rather than starting them on Communicator 5, we would tend to look at some of our other software offerings, such as BoardMaker um, and Snapseen, which is like a... Um, it's an app basically where you can use visual scenes to help you communicate. Um, for symbol users, once again, we do still have some symbol um, pages within Communicator 5 um, and we still support them for those who've used them historically. But for um, new AAC users or new people we meet who are looking at symbols, we tend to look at uh, our Snap Core First software, which we've got lots of other great webinars on. Um, and what we're going to focus on and what Communicator 5 is focused on and is really our flagship product for is for those AAC users uh, that are using keyboards. It's for text-based communication or people that want to be able to access um, the internet and, and some of the other apps that we're going to be looking at today. So in terms of our offering, Communicator 5 is for our literate users. Um, John has done some great webinars to show how um, we've got some nice tools within Communicator 5 to make communication as fast and as efficient as possible with, with minimal effort. Um, the aim is to allow users to do what they once did or what others are, uh, are doing using phones and laptops and tablets and that kind of thing. Um, you'll see today it's much more than just voice output. Um, obviously, there's lots of great features for text to speech, um, but we want to have tools for being able to control environment, access social media, and long distance communication. Uh, we want the solutions to be able to uh, go with someone on their journey and progress with them. Uh, we want it to be able to be personalized, easy to use and set up. Uh, and the key thing with Communicator 5 and some of the stuff we're gonna to touch on now is the independence level that we, we can offer from within Communicator 5, whereby all the key settings are in the user's hands. And that's what we're gonna start with because uh, as I say, this is going to carry over to the accessible apps uh, that we're going to be looking at today. So you're in charge. Um, all the key settings for Communicator 5 are accessible to the user, regardless of whether they're uh, an iGaze user, touch, or using a switch. And um, this is what the Communicator 5 homepage 
would look like. And you see we've got different tools, apps, we call them page sets here that the user can choose from. Um, and one of the um, tools available is for settings. So if I go to settings, it will bring me to an accessible page where I can um, have access to change my uh, eye gaze settings, whether I need to check my position, recalibrate, change dwell times, whether I want to change my input method, perhaps I've gotten tired and I need to uh, switch over to using a switch, um, and also access to all my keyboard settings where we can change um, layouts and size of buttons and diction and that kind of thing. Um, the other thing you can do, um, or the users can do, um, which basically means they can choose what they have access to, they're in full control and in charge of their own software, is they can edit this homepage themselves. So they can um, come to, you can see there's an edit homepage tool on here. And when you come into here, you can um, rearrange this homepage, change the size of your grid, change the colors, um, but you can also add and remove page sets. So if we want to add a page set, we click there, and it brings us into this section where down the left hand side, we've got our different categories of tools. Um, and today we're going to be looking at the accessible apps and they're in add on products, which is the category I'm in here. And if I want to add Spotify to my homepage, I would select it using my access method, add it to homepage. And then when I come out of the editing mode, you can see that uh, the accessible version of Spotify has been added to my homepage. Um, one of the other things that's worth mentioning, and you'll see this as we go, when we spoke about um, the user being able to access their own settings and, and change their own keyboard settings, um, one really important point there is that those settings are universal. So if someone has a preferred keyboard and has set certain dwell times on their keyboard um, and different layouts, that will be consistent no matter which tool they are, are accessing using Communicator 5. So you don't have to worry about different layouts of keyboards and things like that. The keyboard that you choose within your settings is universal and that's the keyboard that'll pop up regardless of which one of these apps or tools that we access. So I will pass over to John for this bit to, um, as there was just a bit of background, but we'll, we'll jump into the accessible apps now and I'll pass over to John to introduce that. Okay. So the idea behind the accessible apps, they're an add-on to uh, Communicator 5, uh, currently available for all um, i13 and i16 users. They'll appear for them in, um, the update notifier and as Joe said uh, to start going with them they'll just need to add them to the home page through the technique that he just showed you. Um, with these apps it wasn't the intention um, to set up something whereby the user was going to be given a cut down version of say Spotify or Facebook and you know building Facebook from within communicator. The idea was actually to uh, give full access to the actual communicator that everybody uh, sorry the actual facebook and spotify and netflix etc that everybody else is using um now of course users would have been able with um their windows control tool be that switch based mouse emulation or be that say for an eye gaze user they could use windows control or computer control they they are able to go to the desktop versions of these apps anyway um but some people do prefer to work within the safe, comforted environment of Communicator 5. So an environment that they're familiar with, but also nice big buttons. And that's particularly relevant if somebody has sort of uh, access difficulties. Um, do you want to go to the next slide, Joe? So uh, what we try to do is give people full uncompromised ac uh, access to um, apps that everybody else is using for leisure, connectivity, social, communication. So we've got everything from Spotify, Netflix, YouTube, um, MSN for news, Instagram, Facebook, Facebook Messenger, lots. We're gonna go through each of these in turn. Do you wanna go to the next slide? What we're really, really proud of in the way that um, these work is that uh, when you're using the system, you'll be presented on the right hand side of the screen with whatever app um, you're using, be that YouTube, be that Netflix, Instagram, WhatsApp. And on the left hand side, you're going to get the Communicator 5 page set that uh, matches it. 
Now, what's cool about it is that these page sets are what are called dynamic. And that means that um, the content will respond, or the page set on the left-hand side will respond to what's displayed on the right-hand side. Um, so, you know, as you're scrolling through like a social media feed, feed such as Instagram or Facebook, you'll encounter lots of things like photo galleries or someone might have shared a web link with you or a, a YouTube link. Um, or it could be that there's a video or just a, a post to interact with. Now, what the system will do is determine that that's what's been presented with you and it will change uh, dynamically without you having to do anything. It will change the page set on the left hand side. So you have all of the correct buttons to interact with um, the content that's been presented. So if you're presented with a video, you will get things such as play and pause. If you're presented with a photo gallery, you'll get options that would allow you to uh, navigate through the photo gallery. Next slide, please, Joe. The other part of it that's really cool is uh, what we talk about is deep, deep linking. So when you're using apps such as WhatsApp or Facebook Messenger, etc., people don't just stick to standard sending you a picture or sending you a, um, you know, a simple text message. They're often going to send you interesting content from other sources like web pages and YouTube links that they found elsewhere. What we do with the system is we have this deep linking so that um, if you encounter uh, in your WhatsApp feed a YouTube video, um, it will jump from one page set to the other to allow you to control that content that somebody's just sent you. Next slide there, Joe. So it's off to, to Joe now to, to give you a, a bit of a demonstration. Yeah, let's let's jump into Communicator 5 and we'll show you the new apps and show you this um, dynamic interface that John was talking about. So we'll switch over. to so Communicator. So this is me on my Communicator homepage now. And you can see I've already added the accessible apps to the homepage. Uh, and we're going to go through a, sh a few of these and show you some of the favorite features that, that we've picked out. Um, and as I say, any, any questions or comments along the way, please feel free to jump in the chat. Have we got anything in the chat so far, John, just before I jump in? Okay, I'll jump in. Um, so we're going to start with uh, Instagram. So we will um, hit our Instagram icon, um, page set on the home page. And this is, uh, this is what's going to pop up on all of the accessible apps when you open them up, is this, this page on the left-hand side. Um, we're not going to go into all the options here because we've got loads to get through today, but it's just worth noting that um, you kind of get three options. One is to just exit back out onto your Communicator homepage. One is to launch into the app that you're, you're looking to go into. Uh, and one is uh, for login and information. Um, this, is, this is really helpful because... Um, what it does is it gives an accessible way for the user to be able to log into these apps themselves. Um, I mean, if I just hit this one, for instance, just for now, as I say, we won't spend too much time on this bit because me and John are going to show you uh, the different features, but you can uh, use your universal um, Communicator 5 keyboard that I touched on before to log in to the apps yourselves. And all of the apps have this section here for training cards. And we're going to show you all the stuff that's in the training cards, but, um, if, if you basically it's like a, a guide to show you the different tools and functions. So all the pages have got their own training cards to help give a bit of a guide to the users. In this case though, I'm just going to continue to Instagram to interact with the app. And uh, you can see now, as John was saying, we've got our dynamic display, which is accessible on the left hand side and then Instagram here on the right. And um, one of the things that's quite nice is uh, it's only a small thing, but the, the color coordination of, of uh, all the different page sets, you'll notice that, um, the Communicator 5 stuff on the left-hand side, um, the color scheme is, is all set to be exactly the same as, as what you'll see on, on the app, whether it's, uh, you can see here, Instagram or, or YouTube, the colors will change to map the app that we're on. Um, but here we are on Instagram, and you can see that I've now got my tools here to be able to browse through my Instagram feed. So I can come through and uh, look at the different posts that are, are up here. If I want, I can like this post and you can see the heart that's just popped up from where I've liked this picture of the tiger. 
Um, I'm going to continue to scroll down. And hopefully we'll get to a post that will kind of demonstrate the dynamic display that John was talking about. Um, so here's one here. What, what I really like about this is that we keep the left hand side really simple uh, and accessible with nice big buttons. Um, but it allows for quite complex navigation of these apps because now we've got to uh, a post where there's multiple photographs. You can see the dynamic display has added the options for me to scroll through the gallery of this post. So I can scroll down. Once again, we've got a gallery on this one here and I can scroll through my different pictures on that post. Once again, I can like it. I could comment on this post so I can come to my comment tool here. Um, and from here, we've got the quick comment section. Um, this once again ties into the importance of the universal keyboard because one of the nice things about the keyboard in communicator and John's got a whole webinar on the tools in this, but you can set different dwell times for things and you have instant access from the keyboard into your stored phrases. So the quick comments bit actually takes you into your stored phrases for Communicator 5 so that you can access them and quickly post things. Or I can use my universal keyboard to type whichever comment that I want with all my dwell times that I've set and with all my uh, learned prediction in here. And um, we'll come out there for now. Uh, and I can also post with emojis as well. So we'll do that on this one. So I'm going to send that emoji uh, and you can see it's popped up there on the bottom of the picture uh, and I'm just going to hit send post to that emoji uh, as a comment there. So nice, easy navigation. Um, we'll see whether we get to a video so that we can see how that changes as well. If not, we'll be able to search for one. So here we go. So you can see on this post, we've got a, a video popped up. Um, the dynamic display has recognized that and it's given me the option to be able to play and pause that video. So this is just when you're on your general feed and it's all, all the things you, you, you want to be able to do in terms of browse and scroll and comment. Um, you can also browse and scroll through the comments themselves. So if I want to see who else has commented on this and what's been said, I can come to the browse comments option here. Um, once again, you can see that I've now got the tools to be able to interact with these comments so I can scroll through them and like the comments. If there's multiple replies, I can bring them up here. I can reply to individual comments. All of this uh, Instagram app has the ability to read different comments uh, and read posts as well. And then I can jump back to my feed and continue scrolling through. From uh, your feed, your other options are to come to your post options. So if I see a post and I want to see more about the author of that post, for instance, and see what else they post, that's where I can come to my post options. And you can see we can either jump back to our feed, we can save this post, we can have it read out to us. Um, let me know if you can hear this. All right, John, but just as an example. No sound there, Joe. I don't know if you shared your computer audio when you started. Uh, I must have missed that, guys. Sorry. But yeah, that was reading that comment out to me um, or, or that post, and, and you can start and stop those. Um, but if I want to go to the author of this post, which is Nat Geo, I can come here. And then here's all of the latest Nat Geo posts. And you can see that I can follow or unfollow them using this button here. I'm able to scroll through their latest posts. And when I see something that I want to check out, I can um, go to uh, select. So at the moment, this side of the screen, um, I'm not interacting with it via eye gaze because I'm browsing it. So I don't want to be making accidental selections. But when I get to the post I actually want, that's when I can choose select here. And you'll notice that now all of these have become eye gazable. So I'm able to uh, choose the one that I want. And say that I want to go to that post page. Once again, the software is going to recognize the tools that I need to be able to navigate this post. And I can once again browse the comments for here. I could play this video. I could like this. I can see what other posts Nat Geo have put up.
So as John was touching on, although we've got quite a nice, simple display here, because it changes depending on what is coming up within the app, um, it means that we can actually do some really uh, quite complex, you know, we can do simple things or we can do really complex things. Um, let's go back. Uh, I'm going to jump back to my menu and my feed. So we've been through this section, which is browsing and going to your post options. Um, the other option from here is to jump to our Instagram menu. From here, you can see this is where we are now on our feed. Um, some of the other options are to be able to search for different that, things. That was one of the questions, actually. So, uh, oh, okay. Can you search for a particular, a particular post by a certain person or a subject area? Yes. So... Once you come back to the menu, this is then where you've got some additional options here. So rather than just being on your feed, this gives us the ability to jump a bit deeper into the Instagram app. So explore, if you've used this on your phone, it's a similar kind of concept where rather than being your feed, it's just kind of general things that you might be interested in. And you can see that the layout's changed to the one that we had before where we can scroll here and look around. But when we get to a post that we want to interact with, we can switch the eye gaze on and select it and do as we did before in terms of commenting and browsing. Uh, but with regard to the question and uh, searching, we've got our search tool here. So if I come to search, um, I'll do a search for FIFA, let's say. You see what's happening in football. And you can see it's done the search in the top right and I can now scroll through. So I want to check out what's going on with the World Cup and select that one. And now here's all the different posts that the World Cup page has posted. I can scroll through. And when I want to check something out, hit select. These all become eye gazable. And I go to the post. Once again, we'll go to that post page. We'll get all the tools we need to interact with it to be able to comment, browse through the different posts, browse through the different comments, have the comments or the posts read out loud to us uh, and all the other things that we've been looking at so far. Um, couple of couple of questions if you're yes ready for them. Uh, so from Fiona and Becky Tyler, and the first one is: Can you post a new photo in Insta? Um, Not what? at the moment, no. Um, and the reason is that um, the actual version of Instagram that we're using here isn't the Instagram app; it's the web browser version of Instagram. And currently, Instagram's web browser doesn't actually have the ability to post on it. So it's not necessarily a limitation of um, what communicator can do. It's literally, if you're using the web browser version of Instagram, you can't post on it currently. Um, so that's why we've not got the ability to do that on here at the moment. Um, and the other question is, will there be access to Insta messages uh, in the future and notifications? I don't know the answer off the top of my head, but we can certainly put that question forward and try and find out for you. Um, this, as I say, has just been launched, so we do tend to take a lot of feedback from our users and our customers, uh, things they'd like and feature requests, and they do get put forward and, um, uh, and put into the list with the developers. So, yeah, that's something that we can, we can definitely put on there. Um, Back to the menu, we've been through our feed and the fact that we can explore and search and save posts. Um, you'll notice uh, just the last couple of things because we've got quite a lot of apps to get through, so we'll have to jump onto the next ones. But um, you'll notice these two options are on all of the apps. The utilities options are the same and are universal, whichever of the accessible apps you go into. And they are there so that um, basically the, the the page is a program, so if we get any pop-ups or anything coming on, the Communicate 5 knows to deal with them and get them out of the way so that the user's not stuck with them on the screen and can't navigate around. However, sometimes um, updates will happen on a website and new pop-ups will come up uh, that perhaps we don't know about yet, and until we know about them, we can't get rid of them. So the utilities is a useful thing to know about because if anything does ever pop up, it gives us tools um, by way that we can escape out of messages that might pop up. Um, so they're available on every page. Um, and the options vary depending on which app you're in, depending on what kind of things that we might have 
the ability to change within the app itself. So for Instagram, for example, we can change the size of the text. I'll just come back to the feed so you can see that in action. Come back to our menu and our options. So you can see I can change my volume here. I can have auto read turned on and off. So if I want everything read out to me, I can turn that on here and I can toggle between my different text sizes from here as well. Uh, I can also log out, log in. So that's a really quick first glance at, at Instagram and the way that, you know, the, the, the way the display changes means that we can interact with all different types of posts that might come up. Um, whenever we are going to exit any of these pages, you can see here we've got exit communicate back to communicator homepage. Whenever we do that, we're going to be given the option to just exit exit and close, which will shut down Instagram and take us back to our homepage, or exit only, which would leave the program still running. And you'll see why that's going to be a cool feature later on. But for now, we're going to close Instagram and exit back to our homepage. Uh, and the next app that we're going to have a quick look at is YouTube. Uh, is there any other questions, John, before I jump in? No, no questions. Okay, bro, thank you. So, yeah, we're going to go from Instagram to the accessible YouTube. So we'll hit that and you'll see, like before, we've got the option to launch the app, uh, log in if we have a Google account or if you want to look at those training cards. Um, we're just going to log straight into YouTube and it will launch the uh, page up. And you'll notice, uh, as I show you this, it works in a similar way to uh, some of the, the pages that we've just looked at within Instagram. And I really like the way this works because uh, what it means is at the moment, we've just got the option to go to our menu, which we'll look at for um, YouTube. And we've got this select tool. Um, what it means is that I can browse around YouTube without any pressure on me at all in terms of making accidental selections. So at the moment, none of these YouTube videos are actually eye gazable. Um, the more button is eye gazable so that I can browse and go to different pages and browse back. And it's only once I've decided on the video that I want that I then hit select. And you can see now all of the buttons have become eye gazable. So from here, I want to go to uh, this video. I can eye gaze on that and it will open the video up. Um, I'm going to hit the go to video page. And an advert at the moment. Oh. And I'm going to pause there. Um, now, I don't know if you noticed that, but when I hit go to video, um, an advert had started playing. And when I hit go to video, what it did is it made the video uh, large screen, full screen. Um, but it also, I've within my settings, which I'll show you, I've got automatic ad skip on so what that means is that um when the we go to the video page the ad is automatically skipped and we get straight into the video that we wanted to watch if i didn't have the automatic ad skip turned on then i've got a button to do it here so if the ad was still playing i could skip it here using my accessible buttons um, but you can see now that we're on a video we've got the option to play and pause it change volume Navigate the video in terms of uh, fast forwarding, rewinding. We can go to bookmarks and jump to different sections of the video if we want to. We can start the video again. And we can look at any video options. So whilst the video is playing, if we want autoplay toggled on, if we want subtitles toggled on, we can do that here. Um, this is a bit I really like because it's something I, I do myself where sometimes you go down a bit of a rabbit hole on YouTube uh, and you get yourself uh, looking at certain uh, videos or topics and then you, you want to carry on with the related videos that are kind of suggested. So there's that option here as well. So if I hit this, it will take us to all the related videos. So once again, that same format of being able to look around and browse without any pressure, get to the video that you want, hit select, these are now eye gazable and it will take me to that video. So you can see it's a nice accessible way of being able to browse uh, YouTube um, 
and play, but also have access that's really simple and intuitive to all the other tools that, that you might need. Um, other than playing videos, um, obviously we've got our menu here like we had with Instagram. So we can come back to our menu and some of the other things that we might want to do is search. So you'll notice if I hit search here, here's my Universal Communicator 5 um, keyboard, which I'm going to emphasize again, has all my dwell settings, all my uh, layout that I'm used to, all my uh, phrases and prediction all in here. We'll do a quick search. Uh, you can see now we've got our search results here and back to that same format of being able to scroll, hit select to make something eye gazable. And go to that video. So we will jump back to our menu. Um, other than um, you know navigating your homepage, searching, you do have access to your history as well if you want to look back at things you've previously watched. And then, as I mentioned before, all the pages have got utilities and options. The utilities are the ones that are universal, which give us um, options in case we get any unwanted uh, pop-ups that haven't been dealt with by the system yet. Um, they will get dealt with. So once something's reported to us, we, we'll update and we'll be able to get rid of them. But in that meantime, we don't want any users stuck with unwanted pop-ups. They can use utilities to navigate that. Uh, and then the options is what is different um, on each page because the option is going to be relevant to the, the app that we're accessing, which in this case um, has the option that I mentioned before, where if I want to skip ads manually instead of it doing it automatically, I can do that here. I can change the volume. And I've got some additional options as well. Um, this is a nice feature whereby um, if perhaps um, from an access perspective, I want a different grid size for my uh, videos that I'm navigating, I can change my table size here. So perhaps I'm tired and I want larger buttons to hit, I can make it a smaller grid size uh, or larger as I, as I see fit. I can apply those changes um, and go from there. All right, so I will um, jump out of YouTube So close and exit because I want to shut down YouTube uh, and I'll pass over to John. Yes, John. Can you, question, uh, can you minimize the cells on the left when watching a film and then wake them up, uh, wake them in YouTube or Netflix? Uh, it's not currently set up for that, is it? Not as far as I know. There is, there is a command in Communicator where you can set something to, to minimize to go to a um, a minimized bit, bit, you know, it's like a single button in the corner or something like that. So that maybe that's a nice uh, feature request alongside with the things that Fiona and Becky have been asking for. We've Definitely. got these, we've got these chat window uh, comments recorded on the, the video. So rather than scribbling them down, we've put the, all of these through to the uh, developers. Um, okay, so I'm going to see. So it's me sharing the screen now, is it, Joe? Yes, please, John. Hmm. Okay, so you can be on the chat window, Joe. Um, yep. That was 34 minutes we got to that point, and we <laughs> I'm going to have to pick up the pace. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, sorry, mate. I had a feeling that might that's, happen. That's all right. Um, so the next one we're going to go into is look at one of the communication and connectivity apps, and that's uh, accessible WhatsApp. So before I do, because uh, I have no control of what people send me, I'm just going to have a quick look on my phone at WhatsApp and check that there's no inappropriate uh, content or messages there. Um, 
So um, if I click on WhatsApp, it's going to go to this same page and I get the ability to um, launch training cards and things like that, but I'm going to launch uh, WhatsApp. It will do what it does always, which is uh, check on the cloud if there's an updated of the uh, updated version of uh, the browser that's going to make WhatsApp more accessible. It does that with all of the apps. Okay, so hopefully you're going to see my feed from my phone. Okay, so um, this should look very similar to how it looks on your phone. Now, with WhatsApp, you do need to have a phone that you connect to. So when you first connect to it, it will ask you to scan a QR code and then it will remain connected to your phone unless you switch WhatsApp web onto a different device. Um, so the kind of things that you can do here, um, it's just an intuitive way of doing what you can do elsewhere um, on your phone, uh, but with nice big buttons. So the first thing you'll see, I've got messages here from various contacts. So I can scroll up and down my messages and see what Alice has been saying and what Cameron's been saying and what Joe's been saying. So I can see that uh, Joe's been sending me a few messages and I've been messaging him. So to access what's over on the right hand side, I go to this button here called chat view. That will change the screen and allow me to go up and down the messages. Um, and you can see the message that's currently active is being highlighted in red. Now, I don't know, I have a problem with my sound, so you might not hear it, but I can click on read message. I love, I love that video. And you may or may not have got the sound there. Did that come across, Joe? Yes. All right, that worked. <laughs> so, um, remember we've talked about the sort of uh, dynamic uh, page sets that respond to the content and also this principle of deep linking. So let's have a look what Joe's been sending me here. So Joe's actually sent me a link that goes to YouTube. Um, so the way I interact with a particular um, piece of content that Joe sent me is by choosing this option here called click message. When I click message, it should intelligently determine that that's actually a YouTube link. Too good to be true. That didn't work. It's worked all day today. <laughs> I'm going to give that one more go, and if it doesn't work, I'll bail. Give it one more go. Actually, I'll see if um, the message from I'm going up the messages and then do click message. No, it doesn't look like it's going to load for a reason I don't know. Or was I just being really impatient there? I'm not sure. It jumped to the uh, YouTube page set on the left. Yeah, it did. So it was just obviously a... launcher. Yeah. Maybe try one of the other ones. Um, yeah, well, news link or something. We've been practicing this and practicing. It does usually work, guys. <laughs> <laughs> it worked beautifully, yeah. So uh, I'll just go to the next content and see if um, Cameron sent me anything. So I'll go again to chat view. And we can see the various messages. And you'll see that I've got a, a video here. And I can go click message. So you'll see that the page, the page on the left has changed. So I've got control, play and pause, and I can switch between different videos if there's multiples and even switch to full screen. But I'm going to exit that in this instance. Um, there is another YouTube link here, and I'm, I'm sure I'm looking for trouble, but by trying to interact with that, I'm going to click on click message. And I'm going to give it to all five. No, right, 
okay. What you should have seen there is that it would have loaded the YouTube player and then it would also have loaded uh, the page set on the left. It was doing half of that in that it was launching the page set on the left, but not the, the YouTube player. Um, and that's one of the most impressive features. So it's a shame that that one didn't work, uh, but it's been working all day. Um, so let's have a look at how we go and uh, actually send messages. So once WhatsApp's loaded again, we'll go um, back to the contact view. And again, I can browse my contact. Um, Joe's on the call, so I, I might as well send him a message. So um, I click on this button here, send message. And I've got a variety of options. So do I dare send a photo? It might not give me access to the photo uh, camera because I'm on a teleconference, but we, we shall see. Okay, a toilet roll. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Okay, there you go, you've got a toilet roll. <laughs> um, I'm also able to send him a message and you'll see that whatever keyboard I have as my default keyboard, it could be a two hit keyboard, a large key keyboard, an eye gaze grid keyboard, um, it's gonna pop up. So I'll say still dot and I'll send him that message. Now I have a choice here. I can either send him that message as text, but I could also choose to send him that message as a voice recording. So if I choose voice, it will actually play it out. Still got my hoard. And then I'm happy. So I will choose approve. And now uh, Joe should have had that picture of the toilet roll. I had to have it handy because I've got hay fever. So I didn't have any tissues, so toilet roll. Um, so once again, I can interact with that if that was my own um, message. <laughs> you see Joe's just responded there. <laughs> so I can go into chat view and I can see what Joe said and have that read back to me. Cheers, John. Or I can actually listen to my recording. So I go up to that recording and choose click message. Still got my hood. And then I'm happy, so I will, okay. Um, now I'm able to uh, look at other options of things that I can send Joe. Um, so I can go into send message. Um, I can actually send him files and pictures from my um, computer if I want. So if I go to send picture, uh, I'm in the documents folder. So you'll see my page set on the left hand side has changed to allow me to navigate. So I will go back one level, uh, no, up one level. And then I will scroll down and hopefully I'll find a pictures folder and then choose open directory. And I know that Joe really likes um, Nemo. So I will select that file and then choose send. I could put a caption on here if I wanted to, but I'm not going to in this instance. Okay, I'm also able to, to send files and I can send emojis if I like, as Joe was showing earlier. So um, I can send an emoji. Now I can put a string of emojis together as well. So these are some standard emojis, but if I go to more, it will take me to the full range of emojis and smileys, etc., that I can choose. So I can put a string together by navigating around those and choosing a different emoji and then choosing add. And then I'll have another one and choose add. And then when I'm ready, I just do send like that. Okay. So, um, the other option is I can uh, browse my contacts. So I can browse the contacts that are available here or just by going previous and next content contact, or I can choose browse contact and get a sort of grid view. And like Joe has shown earlier on, once I choose select, so at the moment I can just use the more button with my eye gaze or whatever my access method is, 
to see the range of my contacts available. But it's not eye gazing very well. <laughs> uh, but once I choose select, that would be made uh, eye gaze accessible. The other thing to be aware of though, for all of these apps, it responds, and Joe's gonna talk about it later in the join in options, but it responds to whatever your access method is. So even in the join in options, I'd said that my access method is switch scanning or touch. Then when I press on select, that would respond accordingly rather than being eye gaze. Yeah, that was actually one of the questions in the chat, John, was about um, other access methods. All um, right, yeah, yeah. So Good. yeah, perfect timing in that, yeah, the, we, we've, uh, we've mentioned eye gaze, um, but yeah, um, the, this this works for touch and switch users as well. Um, you just just set your access method up. Um, okay. Um, it's quarter all, two, so we better jump jump on, John. So all right. Okay. Cool. I'll I can search my content uh, contacts. I can go into menu here and I can do things like start a new group. Uh, I've got the utilities page that Joe was talking about, and then I've got the options page that allows me to set things like auto read or change the font size. Um, I'm going to jump out and the next one to show you is Facebook. Um, I'll give her again a, a whistle stop tour on here. So once again, I click on here and it's going to load the, the, the most recent join in version of Facebook um, so that if there are problems, there is a problem with Facebook at the moment. It's trying to get you to go on to uh, the new uh, way of Facebook being presented. So uh, there's a tool now in joining that allows you to say, we're not ready for that just yet. Um, very similar to how we've been before, you've got the ability to uh, browse through your comments. Um, browse through the uh, post, sorry. Uh, if there's a particular post that I want to explore the comments on, I can click at comments and it will see the comments. I can do comments up, comments down. Um, I'll go back and I'll go back to a different post. Um, if I, if there's a particular uh, post where the text is so long that it's not all showing, I can click on full text and it will show me the full text. Um, if I want to do a post myself, uh, I go up to post options and i can go to new post and i will um, type my post and with all of this I'm able to uh, use word prediction, I'm using my stored phrases, etc. cetera. Um, I can confirm that. Um, I'm just gonna show you place text, so it's not that I'm adding to an existing post. Um, and I can also do things like uh, add GIFs and stuff like that on there, but I'm just gonna post that as it is, but I put an emoji actually, and I'll put love. and then post that. Just a chance to confirm confirm that. Uh, I also have, um, when I come across a post, I shouldn't like my own post, that's very weird. <laughs> but if I come across a post that I want to interact with, um, let's have a look. I can um, uh, click like, and then I can also uh, call up the emotions as well. In your menu, you get options to browse things like your, your groups that you're interacting with or uh, browse through your friends. And then if you go into your options, you've got tools like um, text enlargement and stuff like that. Um, so I'm just gonna go back. So as always, you have a choice of exit or close and exit. I'm gonna exit now and hand you back to Joe. Okay, thanks, John. Um, yeah, I got carried away at the start, so I've left us limited time. So we're going to fly through these these next ones. Um, as I say, any questions, pop them in the chat, um, and we, we can get back to you if we don't have time to address them at the end. Um, we're going to jump into Netflix next. So we'll hit our Netflix app. Same options as we've discussed. Um, accessible login here. I'm going to launch Netflix. Um, 
once again, this one this one's quite impressive because we have the the simple interface as, as usual on the side, but there's really lots that we can do with this. Um, it's it knows to log me in to the the user that I that I'd previously logged in as. Um, my navigation lets me navigate my main Netflix page. It's come through the different shows. If I want to check out comedies, I can scroll along singly. I can move along the line. Um, I can just play the episode that I find. But what's really nice is if I go to episodes and more, which is this tool here, you can see that I've got all these additional options to like and dislike, um, but also to browse through episodes. So if I hit the episodes button, I can go through different seasons. So whether I want season one of Rick and Morty or season three, find the episode that I want. Um, I can have descriptions uh, read out. I can play the episode. Once it's playing, we can pause it. We can bring up subtitles, all that kind of stuff. So as I say, we'll have to fly through these. Um, so I can't show them in, in as much detail. Um, but you can see it's a si similar kind of format in terms of how we navigate. Um, we can search for uh, different shows or actors or uh, movies here uh, using the same ex the, my universal keyboard, which I won't have time to show here. And if we come to our menu, uh, this is really nice as well. So we've got the option to uh, come back to home, which is where we are now, or come to different categories. So um, if I want to browse just TV shows or just movies, I can do that here. Um, once I'm on one of these categories, I can go back and navigate it. Or if I come to my menu, um, you can see I've got the option to browse genres at the top. So I have that tool here as well. So if I hit genres, a bit like John was doing within WhatsApp, we can now use these tools here to go and I want to watch a comedy. So we're going to select that and it brings us to, to our comedies page. So as I say, we can't, we're running out of time, so I can't go through uh, everything in as much detail. Uh, because see, it's a similar kind of concept. The other thing that's quite nice that I'll show quickly is that we can jump into the kids' Netflix uh, version here. So it'll automatically switch over, and it gives us a slightly different menu and different options, but you navigate in the same kind of way. Um, I really like this additional option here to be able to search through characters. So you can search through and find favorite character that you want to watch select it and do a search from there. So uh, once again, we've got our, um, from our menu, we've got our utilities and our different options here where we can turn on auto read and change profiles. But because we're in our time, I'm going to close and exit and jump I'll out. Just, just make a couple of comments here. So um, we've said before that communicator, like in terms, particularly in the UK where we're marking, because we've got snap call first is for the uh, text-based user rather than a symbol-based user but I'm sure you'll see from a lot of these apps that uh, if someone was using snap and just use the jump cat command to snap to go to these accessible apps they would be able to to use them uh, I'm going to run through the questions as well Joe so the first yep. one is, can you clarify the difference between exit and close and exit buttons so what that is is if you um, just choose exit it will Josh. go back to the communicator I'll on show that. that now here okay cool um, is there an ability for an iPhone user to text? We don't have iPhone text support. Um, they should be able to use WhatsApp uh, with no problem. I've not tested it. Yeah, um, and if, if I show this quickly, um, we're going to show Messenger as well. And where, the last question, do you option. need to have the app downloaded on the device from the Windows Store or will they all work through the web browser? Yes, so they are all delivered from the cloud. Uh, so it's basically the, the join-in web browser, which means it's up to date. So no, you don't have to have Spotify downloaded or Netflix or anything like that. It's yeah. The, uh, web -based version. Exactly. Um, so, this page works really similar to, to Netflix. This is the Spotify one, uh, whereby I can uh, browse around my page using my buttons. But if I want to access some of the other options within Spotify, I come to the Spotify menu and we can do things like come to our, our library and we can find artists and browse through our different artists or browse through different albums that we might want to check out. So I want to listen to 
Pink Floyd. You can see we've come to our album. We can browse all the different tracks that we might want to listen to. Um, when you find the one you want, you can obviously play it. I don't know if you'll hear it because my, uh, I don't think my sound is on. But from there, we can go to the artist and browse through um, all their other tracks. We can add it into a playlist. If we don't already have a playlist, we can create one here. Um, and just to demonstrate to the question in terms of the different types of exit, if I'm listening to my songs on Spotify, but I now want to go back on Instagram whilst listening, you might not be able to hear, but I'm going to exit only. So now Spotify is still playing in the background whilst I'm now going on Instagram. So sorry we've had to rush through that one, but I need to let John finish his bit off before we run out of time. So I'm just going to quickly... Um, we can come to our player controls, by the way, where I can now pause it. And we've got the option to shuffle and all that kind of stuff as well. Um, so I'll let you jump on uh, okay. now, John. Okay, cool. Um, Okay, um, I'll do MSN very, very quickly. So we've chosen to use uh, MSN as our news provider. You'll probably say I've never used MSN for uh, my news source. Um, the, re the reason we've chosen it is because it's a tool that aggregates news from a variety of different sources, uh, but it also has excellent multiple language um, support which means that we can release this page at once and it's going to support people in a variety of countries around the world um, very similar to how you've seen before you've got a dynamic button so if i scroll down my content now i'm in what's called a slider page so new, uh, new allegations against andrew easyjet to slash staff and mystery signals uh, you'll see that this these two extra buttons have appeared down the bottom called slider which allow me to, to navigate those pages. But if I go down an article, you'll see that they've disappeared. Again, it's dynamic content. So if I did uh, come across a gallery of pictures, I doubt I'm gonna find them. It will allow me to scroll through the gallery, but we saw that on Instagram. So I'm not gonna worry so much that we, we, we've not found it. Um, if you wanna do stuff like uh, change your language, you can do it there. And uh, if you want to do things like set auto read, so it'll actually read your articles out loud, you can turn it on in your options. So that's MSN News. Um, we also have uh, accessible Google Calendar, which is uh, really good and really easy to use, but I'm not gonna show you that. Um, I'm gonna choose close and exit, that will close, um, that will close uh, MSN and go back to communicate to the homepage. The, the last thing I'm just going to show you is accessible uh, Facebook Messenger. We don't need to spend too long on this because you'll see that the experience is very, very similar to how you saw in um, WhatsApp. In that you will have your feed of messages from various people. So that's my dog, Martin. I can go through the various content contacts. Um, I can now go to chat view, uh, go up and down the messages, decide that I want to uh, look at this view of uh, my dog swimming. I pause that and exit. If I go up the messages, we'll see, oh, hang on, someone sent me a YouTube link. I don't know if I dare do that, but I will. Uh, I click on that message and pray. So this time hey. the, YouTube, the YouTube works. So this is what should have happened with WhatsApp. It will dynamically load YouTube. So it switched from Facebook Messenger into WhatsApp, but then bring up the YouTube control so that I can play this Don't video. Look at all these shapes you see. I've got the normal Orange control, you can the... skip ad or forward and rewind. And then when I exit to app, I go back out of it again. Um, I've got the ability to uh, send messages. Um, so if I go back a level, I can go to previous contact and send a message to Joe. Uh, as before, I can type a message. Just say, hey, I can choose to have it as a voice message or a text message. I'll have a voice message and I can also do things like stickers and emojis and take, uh, send a photo with it as well. 
Um, the great thing about it, but it's impossible to show while you're on a webinar, is that I can actually uh, make a voice or video call to that particular content as, contact as well. Um, it won't let me do it because I'm obviously using the microphone and the, and the, the camera. Hockey dokes. That was the quickest uh, view of <laughs> Facebook Messenger. Uh, you know Instagram really, really well. <laughs> My bad, John. Sorry, I left you. Uh, you words. <laughs> let, let, let you some limited time there, but um, that's the, yeah. So that's everything from us. But uh, literally a minute or two. I mean, we're not rushing off. But uh, any questions at all? Um, there was a quick question. Um, I didn't think we'd have chance to show it. Um, but Kathy was asking about adding to the home page. So we had a couple of slides on that at the start, but if, if you want to hang on, Kathy, John could quickly. I, I mean, if that. anyone wants to, we, there's yeah. no one due on this Zoom call afterwards, I've checked. So I can, I can stay for a bit longer to, stay that, to do that. Uh, but basically it's a case of, um, my tools are already on there, but the user can go uh, to edit homepage or the communication partner could do a right click, but. Uh, and then do edit homepage. But you go edit homepage, it will show you this view. You choose to add a page set. And this is standard for adding page sets if I wanted to add a symbol based page set or I don't know, something for reading Kindle books or something like that. But I'm going into the text communication section. Um, in this instance is an add on product I want to add. And I choose a particular page. I want, they're all added already, but let's just say, let's just say Facebook, I'll remove it, hadn't been added. I just click on it and then choose add to home page. Uh, just as an example, I'll do join, join in, sign in. Join in is the, uh, the sort of name for these accessible apps. And then do add to home page. And you'll see um, that tool has been added on there. Um, just to save you trouble of doing the screen share, Joe, I should also say, um, if you end up with you've exited a lot of programs, but they're still all running, like you came out of um, Acc uh, Accessible Spotify, but didn't close it, and Netflix, you forgot to close it, and you've got lots of apps open, you can do join in, close all, and that will close all join in accessible app windows. Join in options as well is where the user can uh, jump in and do things like set what their access method is. So um, if I go to my page set settings, instead of like for the switch user, for example, I can set it on arrows when I'm doing the select tool or touch uh, rather than eye gaze dwell, which it was before. Just describe those changes. Anything else to, to answer or? Go through there, Joe, in the questions. A uh, quick question from Rosalind um, about the Android for SMS mm -hmm. um, and just uh, any quick comments on that. Um, and it, it works very similar to um, the, the WhatsApp and the uh, Facebook Messenger pages, uh, Rosalind. Um, I believe it was added because a lot of companies send messages in that format. Is that right, John? So it's a way you work to make sure that um, users are able to respond to. Uh, messages from businesses and now those kind of automated messages. Are you saying uh, old, old, old fashioned people still use text? I see. <laughs> and for anyone who's using, using an Android phone who wants to be able to text as well. Um, we're going to send an email um, with a recording of this webinar to everybody who attended. Um, and it will also be up on our, our website. Um, so yes, if you missed any of it or had to jump off early, don't worry, we're going to send you the recording over so you can catch up on it at, at a later date. Um, so sorry, we've overran a little bit there, guys. I, I, I'm fully at blame there. I got carried away with Instagram. But <laughs> uh, <laughs> thank you everyone for attending. Much appreciated. I just, um, I'm just flicking up for anyone who's interested. This is the, the, the Google Calendar, which allows you to re links up with your Google account and allows you to review uh, any appointments you might have. Uh, but the way that you add an event, I'm lucky enough to have a day off tomorrow, so I can go to add an event, and I can edit the title and call it day off. Oh, I've put one day off. But, um, and then I um, edit the time. So it starts, you can either edit in communicator. 
So you've got nice big buttons to choose your time. So I'll choose nine like that. And then the end time. And so selecting communicator and I'll go to five o'clock. Um, or you get an option of actually choosing uh, in the Google Calendar. So if I do the start date, and rather than doing it in Communicator, I do it in the calendar, um, yeah, which isn't working now. Oh yeah, so I can, no, it's not working. I'm gonna do it in, I'm gonna do it in Communicator. And I don't know the date tomorrow. It is the something or something, the 29th. I should have really thought about this. And we're in, we're still in May. <laughs> I have no idea. Okay. And that didn't add. But normally that would have added the date on there. So uh, just an idea of how that works, even though I've failed with it. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming along. And uh, I'll have words with Joe. So we, the next session, we managed to get done a little bit um, more on time. Yeah, that's to give you time to show, show your bits. Uh, yeah, thank you, everyone. We got some comments about uh, loving the large buttons for, for eye gaze. Uh, I think that's one of my favorite bits with this is that uh, it can be really simple. You've got nice, big, accessible buttons to do your, your basic functionality. But at the same time, you can, because, it, because of the dynamic interface, you, you can do some real complex stuff with it as well without overcomplicating the, the actual display. So uh, we hope you all like it. Uh, any feedback would be much appreciated. And uh, thank you all for your, for your questions and for attending. Yeah. yeah, thank you very much. And just, just get in touch with your local account manager or rep wherever you are in the, uh, in the world and, and get them to give maybe a, a, a slower demo for you guys. Oh, yeah. Uh, just for anyone who's still on, sorry. Um, I was supposed to um, share the screen just to show uh, we do have other webinar dates. So I'll pop that up while people are logging off uh, if you want to see them. And I can figure out how to do a screen share. Okay, so yeah, sorry, we didn't give you much time for questions, but uh, is we're going to be doing this this one again. So if you enjoyed it, please um, point other people. It's going to be on the third of June. Um, we've got some really cool stuff um, within the message banking. We've got a free message banking um, ability within Communicator Five, which we're going to be touching on on the ninth and twenty fourth of June. Um, and we're going to be doing a bit of a deep dive into Gaze Viewer, which is a, an amazing tool uh, that we can use for for assessing. Um, students or AAC users or someone who is using alternative access methods. It's got loads of applications uh, essentially using using an eye tracker uh, and they're on the 15th and 30th of June. So um, all of the um, links to sign up for our webinars are on our um, website and with, please do follow us on Facebook as well. We post all the announcements there too. Um, and if you want any smaller personalized trainings or you want us to go into detail about any of the stuff we, we kind of covered quickly today, uh, please do let us know. We, we, we'll do our best to help. And in terms of uh, Robert's question, will it be available for older devices at all? Uh, we are looking at ways that we can maybe in the future distribute this uh, to other uh, communicator users. But there is a, a licensing element uh, that we need to address. It's been developed in a in a partnership, you see. Thank you very right. much, guys. All right, we'll stop the recording there. As I say, feel free to get in touch and thanks again.